So if you want to play around with trying to find some data before you begin your final project, a really good idea is to start a uh, final project folder and just begin to explore the data that's available and come up with an idea after you look at data. Don't do it the other way around. So on the final uh, lab or the final project, I, had, I uh, included some data links and the, the one that I use the most that's Oregon data is from the Oregon Geospatial Data Clearinghouse, only I don't think they call it that anymore. No, they call, oh, nope, come on, open up. I'm just going to do it this way. I think they call it the Spatial Data Library. There you go. And so they have a bunch of data sets. Uh, sadly, um, for us right now, most of their data has been uh, put in uh, a format called a geodatabase. So I want to show you what that looks like and how to deal with that. Um, some of these files are huge. Uh, this this is a raster data file that is is really big and um, very difficult to work with so I wouldn't recommend something like that uh, these soils data are pretty big um, let's just do something easy like the uh, Oregon city limits so I'm going to click the download it's going to come in as a zipped file in my uh, downloads And I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. I'm going to make a new folder here called City Limits. And I'm going I'm going to drag that zipped folder in there. And then I'm going to ex, uh, extract it there. So this is a shape file. Thank goodness. That, oh, nope, it's a geodatabase. Um, but it also has a shape file with it. Okay, so in order to look at these, I'm going to start a data uh, evaluation arc map. So I'm just going to have an arc map in here um, that I can look at. So let me find something else. So that was uh, city limits. Let's go... Oops, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at, uh, well, ArcMap is thinking of opening. Um, hmm, bioscience. Let's see what they have there. Oh, they have uh, Steelhead, Steelhead, Chinook, Coho, uh, Umpqua, Oak, Vegetation, Assessment. Hmm. Natural areas. Oh, I want natural areas too. So I'm going to take natural areas and I'm going to make another folder called natural areas. All right. And I'm going to take that natural area folder, drag it into there, and extract it. Let's see. Oh, that's a geodatabase as well. Okay, well, we can handle that. So I'm going to open up ArcMap and I'm going to save this in my folder. Oh, I was already in my folder. I'm going to save it next to these as data evaluation. And now I can take a look at those two files. So um, if you look at a geodatabase, you can't read it uh, in X, in uh, just the regular file format. But when you open it in the table of contents, you can see that um, it looks like a tuna can. And I can open that, and I've got this point called natural area centroid and natural area polygon so I can pour that on my map okay so there's some natural areas in Oregon um, I've got the city limits in two formats I have them as 
in the geodatabase or I have them in a shape file. I'm going to put them on here. So I could, um, and then I'm going to go into our uh, lab. No, I don't want downloads desktop. I'm going to go into the lab 10 data and I want to pull out Lane County. So I could clip both of these layers uh, by Lane County so that I would only be mapping the city limits and natural areas in Lane County. Um, so gosh, I'm going to make these really red so I can take a look at them. Okay, well, there's a few natural areas in Lane County. Um, so, let's see, what is that? That's in that, okay. So, these are two really cool data layers. So, maybe I want uh, all of those. So, I'm going to make a new folder called uh, Final Data. And I'm going to use that geoprocessing that we learned in the in lab 10. No, I'm not. I'm going to do selection. Uh, select by location. I want the natural areas that are in Lane County. And I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to export those into that new final data folder I created. And I'm going to call it oh I have to save it as a shape file I'm going to add that to the map I'm going to get rid of that one nice okay so now I'm going to get the city limits too. select by location city limits that are in Lane County I'm going to export those city limits cool so now I've got a map that I could focus on with just uh, Eugene Springfield I could focus on Florence I could make a map so I've gotten two data layers just in five minutes that I'm playing around with um, the BLM website where did that go? Has some pretty nice information as well. So I might want to look at, um, well, maybe grazing allotments. I don't know if there's any in Lane County, but I'm going to go here and download. Um, I'm going to say save the file. Okay, it's going to my downloads again. I don't know where it's going. There it is. So I'm just going to um, open that. Open that. Well, shoot. It should have been in my... Huh. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to make another folder called grazing. And drag that in there. And extract it. And again, it's a geodatabase, so I can't really see anything until I get into here. So I'm going to refresh. There's the grazing. We'll see if there's any... Oh, how cool is this? Okay, I've got grazing allotments, polygons. I don't know, let's throw that in there. Oh, there are no grazing allotment polygons in Oregon, or in Lane County. Lots of them uh, in eastern Oregon. So maybe I don't want that data layer, so I'm going to remove it. But the process is going through these different sites, finding some data that you can work with, 
And, whoops, I didn't want to do that. There we go. Zoom to layer. So I could find, um, I could perhaps download, um, what was the one I was thinking of that we did before? Uh, water. So I could download water. If I wanted to buffer that water by a half a mile, input feature, water, I'm going to buffer it uh, 0.5 miles. I'm going to put it in my final project, final data, water buffer. Okay, so now I have a half mile buffer around the water features. And so now I could intersect the water buffers and the natural areas. So maybe this is my entire project. I want to look at uh, how many natural areas are within um, a half mile of a water feature. So I'm going to put the water buffer in here. You can't do this one, you know. I just did it. Um, and I oh, it's going to go to my geodatabase. I want to put it here. So I'm going to intersect water and nat nat natural areas. Okay. All right. So I don't think there are any. Okay, so that first project for a final project was a bust. Oh wait, I so lie. Look at that. Okay. Okay, so I have that many, <laughs> doesn't look like a lot, does it? But let's do this just because I can. Hmm, that's the shape area. Now, I don't think that's the accurate area because we've clipped and cut. So I'm going to go calculate geometry. And I want to do area in square feet. Hmm. So now there are 128 little polygons. Um, and I now know the total area of places that are in uh, within the half mile of water course. I also is that management name? I could map these by the management name. Now, part of the problem is they're so small they don't help. But you can see how just, okay, I've spent 13 minutes and I've gotten a lot of data um, and I've, I'm close to kind of coming up with a project. So if you spent an hour or so looking at data, evaluating it, um, saving the pieces that you might be able to use in a final data folder, then it would be really easy to put your map together.